Shirley Kemp of Pepsi and Shirley fame, uh, great friends with George Michael and Andrew Ridgely. And it is wonderful to talk to you this morning, Shirley, and say mega congratulations. Oh, thank you. Morning, Pip. Morning, Anne. Morning. Yeah, really lovely. Really, what a way to spend Christmas because, uh, it, you know, George loved his number ones. So I know he's around. It's like a really lovely nod to him. And I can feel it's him smiling and so happy that he's got the Christmas number one. I mean, it's always been a popular song. You hear it wherever you go at this time of year. I wonder what expressed it into the number one spot just this week. Well, this year was the Netflix documentary, the, the Wham, it was Wham uh, Netflix documentary, which was a great insight to the boys and their relationship and the whole story of Wham, which was only like a four or five year period. Um, so I personally think that's what it must have been. And Shirley, we were just looking at, at uh, a bit of the video there and maybe we can, we can see a bit of it again because it's, it's obviously great and embarrassing for you to, to, to look at it from where 1984. Are, are you, just tell us where it was filmed. And is it right that when you were filming the scene round the table, did you all get a bit tipsy? OK, so the video was filmed in a most beautiful place called Saspe in Switzerland. It was the picture postcard, log cabins, but everyone in the video, apart from uh, the, the two girls there, the, that little girl, and I've forgotten her name, which I feel terrible, they were actors. So um, oh, were. we knew the director, Andy Morahan, really well, but we were really bad. Every time he said, go that way, we went the other way. People <laughs> were throwing snow at George. He just had his hair all blow dried. There's a scene <laughs> where he has to wear his hood because his hair got so soaked from all the snowballs that everyone was throwing. Um, yes, we, we were told not to touch the alcohol, but I think, um, <laughs> you know, Christmas, you what know, do you expect? Of course you do. But, yeah, that video uh, warms my heart. It's literally fun, friends, and it's really authentic. Yeah. When, when was the first time you heard the song? Um, when it was written. Um, I, you know, there was something about uh, with George, every time he wrote a song, he, he would be really excited and he'd play it to you in his car. That's where you'd go because you had your cassette in the car. And I remember thinking, just you get that cold feeling where you like chills and you just think, this is, this is going to be around forever. And it really is around forever. And you know, he's so clever. He's such one of the greatest things. And it's not only that, it's the way he sings the song. Mm. It's just voice is just beautiful it's, there's so many people have done covers of it even you know Alanis Morissette who I'm a huge fan but I'm like no please no one do covers of this song you just need George's version and do you still love listening to it at home at Christmas when you when you go out you don't ever get you know you don't ever get fed up of it because we were asking this to Noddy Holder earlier with, with um, Merry Christmas everybody but that's right, actually, I love Merry Christmas. I mean, not a hold of that song. That's something I grew up on. But it is that sign. It's like, OK, it's Christmas. It's, it's part of our lives now. It's in the Christmas DNA. So I think the great thing about a Christmas song is you don't get fed up of it. And mm. how you write a song like that, I wish that I knew. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I never get fed up of it. I love it as soon as I hear it. And how are you spending Christmas, Shirley? I'm sure your is your is your lovely husband Martin Kemp there busy busy cooking Roman and Harley he'll be, he'll as be, well. He's good at washing up and tidying up. I'll be stuck to this little station behind me, my cooker. <laughs> um, lots of cooking, lots of prep, preparation tomorrow. But I've got to go to the shops now and pick everything up, which is the hardest part of Christmas. <laughs> I know. I mean, I'm, I'm the same. I've got to go to the shops today, so I, we won't keep you much longer. It's just many, many congratulations. Mm. It, it's a lovely time to have that success. I mean, anyone who knew George Michael will feel a little sad as well, because um, obviously we lost him on a Christmas day not that long ago, really. Uh, and we all remember his incredible talent. But what fun having been part of that unique history. I know. I mean, it's only watching the, the, the Wham! Netflix documentary that made me realise, wow, how proud I am that I was part of it. And I, when my, my kids saw it, and they both looked at me in amazement, saying, we didn't know Wham! were that big. We didn't know oh, what a life you've had. So I'm, I have so much gratitude for that being part of my life. And Shirley, actually watching that documentary, I cried. That friendship between Andrew and George was just 
beautiful. Mm, well, beautiful. Uh, and oh. it, it made, me, it made me really, really, really tearful. Very quickly, I bet George got you all some wonderful Christmas presents over the years. <laughs> you know what he was known for? He used to send us hampers around the 19th of December. And these hampers were full of everything you needed for Christmas. And that was always like the, the other sign that it's Christmas. And, and then he would have the most beautiful dinner party at his house Christmas Eve. So I miss all that. But, you know, in life, you have to look at memories and you have to have gratitude. And that's all I have left now. Mm. Yeah, happy memories, happy memories. It's lovely to talk to. I love your cooker. I love that area with the, <laughs> the twinkly lights. Very nice. You are organised. <laughs> oh, thank you, Shirley.